Okay, uh, thanks everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, joining my talk on uh, Ansible uh, Beyond Playbooks. Um, I work at Symantec. I'm a software engineer, uh, and I'm really passionate about uh, automation and Ansible. Um, what I hope to uh, you know, impart in this 10 minutes talk is uh, for folks who you know, have not used Ansible, maybe they'll take away something from Ansible. You know, how, can you increase the I'm mic? So what I intend to you know, impart in this 10 minutes is you can take away something from this talk you know, of you know, how useful Ansible can be in your deployments and how easy it is. Um, uh, I'll highlight on two key features uh, which I have used and have been really helpful to us. Uh, so, uh, you know, just to give a highlight on, I'm sure some folks already know what Ansible is. Uh, it's an automation, orchestration, and deployment framework. It's written in Python. Uh, it's really good for configuration management as well. Uh, the best part about Ansible that I like is its simplicity and ease of use. Uh, you can actually uh, onboard folks uh, with Ansible uh, in less than, I would say, one hour, uh, you know, if you have the right framework, uh, as opposed to sometimes when I have used other frameworks. Uh, the other good thing is it's agentless, so you don't need to install anything on your host, uh, on your remote host that you're monitoring to get started. So that's also a really good feature. But the uh, two features I wanted to talk about are, uh, one is Ansible Dynamic Inventory. And uh, you know, let's kind of think about why do we even need a, need this feature. So Ansible, when you're uh, writing a playbook, so Ansible usually has playbooks. Uh, it needs two things. You need to tell it what you need to perform on your host, and the second is you need to tell it the inventory that you need to you know what host you want to perform the operation on, and that's the inventory part. And by default, Ansible has a static inventory, so you can define a list of hosts with your groups and Ansible will perform those operations. Uh, but now imagine a cloud which is highly dynamic, where you know, capacity is being added, removed, nodes are being added, removed. You know, how do you make sure that you know, your static inventory matches with the dynamic environment of your cloud? And that's where you can use Ansible Dynamic Inventory. <coughs> uh, the other use cases, think of a case where you have multiple large clouds. Uh, it'll be very hard to manage static inventories because you'll constantly be keeping you know, track of changing them. The folks who are writing the playbooks, they'll have to make sure that the inventory is correct. Uh, so think of the different resources that you have in your cloud. So you have your bare metal nodes, your, your server switches. Uh, you have your, uh, what I like to call your infrastructure uh, resources. And uh, you know, in this case, we have our uh, OpenStack uh, infrastructure VM. So all the control services are running in a distributed manner on the VMs. And finally, you have your cloud resources. So these are your tenants. Uh, you know, we have uh, these are your analytics uh, users. These are your other tenants that are on the cloud. So how do you manage you know all this environment? And uh, you know, how do you make sure that the folks who are operating on this cloud don't get insane because? You know, when you have such a big environment with so many different clouds, you know, it takes a long time just to figure out what your environment looks like. So look at this diagram, it's pretty neat. So think of it as the bottom layer is your clouds, right? You have your different clouds, and at the top, you have the person who is actually <coughs> wanting to do something on your host. He's you know, either trying to patch some of the computes, he's trying to patch a, you know, keystone nodes, he has to figure out, you know, first of all, you know, which cloud and which environment he needs to pick, you know, to actually do all that. And the idea of a dynamic inventory, the way we use it, is to hide that complexity from the end user. So, uh, in this case, what we have is, you know, dynamic inventory takes as the input as you can have static inventory files. So there are cases where, you know, there are bare metals that do not change too often, and we maintain a static inventory. Uh, these are folks who are, you know, the seasoned ops guys who know how the environment looks like. Uh, we have Elastic DB clusters for maintaining the resources. Uh, you can also query OpenStack itself to get access of your all the VMs from your cluster. And finally, uh, what's really cool about Ansible is it can read any YAML file essentially, or you can provide it any data it wants. So, you know, we started out as with Puppet modules. So we have a lot of data in high format for our uh, Puppet orchestration. 
but without rewriting a lot of stuff, we could reuse that and you know feed it to our Ansible framework. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel when you're introducing, let's say, a new framework like Ansible. So essentially, if you see at the end, the dynamic inventory module feeds back a JSON object to the person who is writing the playbooks. So all he needs to worry about is the naming convention. So essentially, when he wants to query, let's say, a Keystone node on US East Cloud, he just has to say US East underscore Keystone. And that's the naming convention that we follow. And you know he can actually get the list of hosts on that environment. So the good thing is now, in the future, let's say when we do an upgrade, we destroy these keystone nodes, let's say we spin up something else, he doesn't really need to know, you know what underneath happened. We can take care of that. The dynamic inventory will give him the right resources. Uh, so that's, that's a really neat feature that uh, really helps us. Um, so what this shows is this is what the dynamic inventory object looks like. Uh, it's nothing but a Python module that we have written, which queries the different data sources that we have and returns this data to ans feeds this data to Ansible, essentially. And this is how Ansible generates the host vars. So if you see like the US East one underscore all is all the hosts. This is truncated because of the size. Uh, but this is what the dynamic inventory would look like uh, to Ansible. OK, so uh, that was one point. The next thing I wanted to bring up was Ansible without playbooks. Uh, what I mean by that is, so most of the folks have used Ansible with playbooks, or you can use the Ansible CLI itself. Uh, I have also used Ansible through a Python module. So imagine you have a framework, um, and instead of that, let's begin the use cases of where you would actually care to use that. So um, you know, we have several instances where we need to figure out all the VMs that are running on our bare metal nodes. Uh, you know, for uh, folks to basically uh, manage. Or uh, there is a need to compare configuration between different cloud deployments. Uh, you know, in this case, uh, usually my approach has been to write simple Python automation modules, you know, to accomplish that. And uh, Ansible here can play a really good part. So, you know, if you call, Ansible is a Python module, essentially. And essentially what you can do is you can directly invoke the Ansible classes itself. So if you look at the Ansible hierarchy, uh, you know it has playbooks. Essentially, you have plays. And underneath plays, you have a multi list of tasks. And Ansible follows the same class hierarchy when it's actually doing, uh, you know, when it's actually executing. Uh, and at the end of the day, what Ansible calls is the Ansible runner module, which is the really the a uh, module that you know actually does the work of you know sending the python module on the host you know executing and getting the data out so in this case uh, you know if you think uh, you wanted to use ansible in a way that you would use some other python modules like paramico or fabric uh, ansible can be used as well and the advantage of that is let's imagine if folks have used paramico you know, you would have to do a lot of groundwork for it. For instance, you know, you'd have to create an SSH connection. You would have to query. You would have to do operation. Let's say you were writing to a file. You would have to write all that logic. Here, in this case, you can actually use the Ansible runner modules to do that job for you. And it returns a JSON object, which can be easily parsed and you know, integrated with your other uh, Python frameworks. Uh, so this was one use case that I had used. And you know, it comes in very handy to very handy to write uh, very quick automations you know to do a lot of things and this is how you would invoke it so you know first thing is you set your python path to the ansible uh, folder uh, you can import the ansible runner and then you can directly call instantiate the runner uh, so the key fe key things that you need is the module name and for folks who have used ansible this is you know you can call command shell line file or any ansible module that you would normally call through playbooks you can pass the host list, uh, your remote username, password, or the key. And uh, complex args is basically a list of arguments that you would either pass through playbook. You can pass, pass it here as a JSON object. And finally, when you call run, it returns the result in a JSON object after performing the operation. And the output that it returns is uh, it has a JSON object with two keys. So the contacted is the list of hosts that it was able to perform the action on. 
And you know, you can see here, I'm just doing a simple ping. The model name is ping. It just returns a pong, so I know that the connection was successful. And for the host that it wasn't able to contact, you know, it sets it in the dark list. Uh, so that's it. Uh, that was my talk. I hope you got something out of it. You can, you know, if you're considering Ansible, uh, probably help you a little bit. And if you have any questions.